Welcome to Your Career Story Podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Your Career Story podcast, Enneagram at Work bonus bingeable edition. Here we are. Um, And we're going to have some fun in this episode because we are talking all about the Enneagram type seven. So just as a reminder for folks, we're doing this in every episode, a little bit of a disclaimer that the Enneagram is a tool for you for self-awareness. And so if it's, if you're using it to relate to other people, we want you to utilize it to understand people better, just to communicate better. Um, It's not to fix folks. So Lauren, thanks for coming back and let's chat about the type seven. Yes. Okay. The sevens are the joyful person or sometimes called the enthusiast or the visionary. Mm -hmm. Um, Sevens are quick thinking, they are adaptable, and they are positive in their outlook on the world. Where other people see problems, they see opportunities. They can put the silver lining on anything. Mm. Um, They like to enjoy multiple interests or multiple options. And their challenge is to acknowledge that problems and limitations and to bring their attention back to the present and to the task at hand. Okay. So what sevens will do is if a problem or if something is pinning them in, they will try to escape that in some way. Okay. So that may be, let me go to a task that's more fun. If this sure. task doesn't seem, you know, as enjoyable anymore, mm-hmm. let me plan a new trip or dream a new dream, that yeah. sort of thing. So a little bit I don't want to say scattered is probably not the right word, but just like a little bit all over the place with the dreams. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because their minds are moving very, very quickly. Okay. Um, they have ideas upon ideas upon ideas. Yeah. Um, and what sevens have to think about is sifting through those to see which ones they actually want to commit to. Sure. And I think sometimes when we work with sevens, we're quick to shoot down, you know, mm-hmm. all the ideas because of the sheer number of them. Sure. But... They're just having fun. They're playing. They're exploring. They're exploring exploring the options. And that's what they really, really want to have is to kind of feel like they have some openness and that the world is available to them. Yeah, I love that. I was telling um, Lauren this before we hopped on that most of my best friends are sevens, which is so funny. Yeah. Like, it's so random that most of my best friends are seven. And I know that they can all relate to that. Mm-hmm. Everything that you just said there is very true about them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking to a seven last night and honestly about a lot of the things that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So talk to us a lot, little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of a type seven. Okay, so sevens, especially in the workplace, can be conceptual innovators. Okay. So if you need new things and Mm. new ideas, they are going to be the ones that can create all of that for you. They like to initiate new visions. They like to come up with new solutions to problems and they can find the silver lining in anything. So Mm. if a project is tanking, oh, well, this is good because that, you know, gives us time for something else. Like let's, let's put that aside and then we can just move on to the next fun thing. Sure. They tend to be able to connect ideas really well Mm. um, because their brains are moving so fast and possibilities are very open to them. Mm. Unlike the six, like we talked about before, possibilities seem kind of closed because they're always finding the problems. Possibilities are wide open to sevens. So they're able to connect lots of different ideas and concepts together because they are not focusing on the problems. Yeah. So for a six that maybe, and we didn't, we're not talking really about wings during this, but the six that's a wing seven, like how does that work? Then if they're typically thinking about like very closed off, I guess, in the possibilities, and then they have a wing seven that's very open to possibilities. Well, it does help them open up more, okay, um, which is good. Or they're going to feel in conflict all the time. Yes, (laughs) one or the other. Yes, yes. So our wings help us 
tap into spaces that our dominant type is deficient in a lot of the time. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So what are some other strengths and weaknesses of a type seven? Sevens make work fun. Yeah. They are just so fun to be around. I mean, they, they don't um, get bogged down in the heaviness of pressure at work. They tend to just be able to be light um, with whatever's going on. And so that brings a lot of fun. Um, As far as weaknesses are concerned, Mm -hmm. like we said this whole time, when strengths get exaggerated, they can turn into weaknesses. Sure. So when sevens want wide open possibilities, they can really resist being pinned down. Mm. So sometimes it's difficult to get a seven to commit to something. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes sevens will try to escape things that aren't exciting their minds. Sure. Because that feels boring. Sevens do not want to be bored. Is that their basic fear? Um, One of them. Yeah. Yeah. So they're afraid of not um, being taken care of. And so they are- It makes me just want to hug all my seven friends. I know. And this is what, and we'll talk about this more when we talk about how to work with a seven. But for this type and some other types that seem to be okay, a lot people forget that yeah. there's probably something else going oh, on too just that they all. just aren't yeah that they just aren't tapped into sometimes their thirst for change mm-hmm. because they resist being bored can create unnecessary change yeah. so if things are working they may just want to jump to something else just cuz they're done with that idea or done yep. with that thought mm-hmm. sevens can tend to hobby jump around yeah like oh I'm gonna learn to play the banjo yeah and then they hey you know <laughs> I feel like I have some seven in me from time to yes, time yes yes we all do we, we all, all do. have all you yeah. know nine types and then we yeah. have got our dominant you know and then once that's over but they're fully committed you know sure when they have the idea yeah. but then when it's time to put in the work yeah. is when things start to dwindle and that can be a negative or a weakness that sevens might have at work they're really passionate about an idea but then when it comes to doing the more mundane things mm. to actually put it into action sure. then they can have a hard time they can do a hard time with yeah it. okay Have we convinced you to get obsessed with the Enneagram yet? Yeah, we thought so, which is why we wanted to send you into this holiday season with a little something something so you can continue your Enneagram education. Head on over to www.genevaviano.com slash type to download our free guide, Learn Your Type, Love Your Coworker. This guide is a complement to the bonus bingeable podcast series, and we've made it stupid simple to understand the Enneagram, your type, and how it can work for your career. We really, really, truly believe that the Enneagram is the best tool out there for teams. So we want to equip you to be the best rockstar professional you can be. Again, head on over to www.genevaviano.com slash type to download Learn Your Type, Love Your Coworker. Okay, let's hop back into my conversation with Lauren. So if we wanted to communicate well, right, yes. we want to love on our sevens, yes. how do we do that? Well, you're going to want to prepare yourself for the pace of their conversation. Okay. It's going to be fast um, because they are thinking so fast. Um, yeah. And a lot of times sevens will interrupt people. Mm. And it's not because they don't care what the other person is saying or mm. they, you know, are rude. They're just so excited mm-hmm. to be in the conversation and their brains are moving so quickly. Then they just have to jump in and they just sometimes don't even notice. Yeah, they don't so, even notice. You know, preparing yourself for that fast pace. So if you're a five who has to work with a seven Mm. um, and you need lots of thinking time, you may want to communicate that clearly. Hey, we're going to talk about something, but I need you to help me think or let me let let me me have time. Mm. Yeah, let me have space and time to do that. Sevens also will be very enthusiastic, but it doesn't always mean that that means commitment. So if you're on a team with a seven and if you need a firm commitment about something, you're going to want to circle back with an email and get that in writing Yeah, Um, because they get so excited and they can dream and they don't realize that sometimes the dreaming sounds like they're agreeing to something Sure, Um, or sounds like they say, oh yeah, 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 that's a great idea. Well, Mm -hmm. when they actually look at their calendar, what can I actually do? Mm -hmm. Um, even though that sounds fun and would be great, yeah. what's reality look like? Do, is there, is, you said there's a, would, would, would it be safe to say that they overcommit? 
sometimes. Oh, I in think some, so. In some capacity. Yes, I think so. Okay. Well, even though they have a resistance to commitment yeah, that's where they want to keep- as I was saying the words. Right, <laughs> they want to keep those options open, Yeah, but they like to say y- yes to fun things. So if there is sure. a new venture happening, they mm-hmm. want to be in on that because it's new and fun. Yeah. Um, you know, but- just because they're excited about it with you doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do the work with you. Right. So you've got to confirm that. Yeah. And just make sure. Okay. Um, Sevens need support to help get their ideas done. Okay. So if you are a team leader and you know that you want to be the visionary and Mm -hmm. you are a seven, Mm -hmm. um, you need to surround yourself with people who like to execute. Yep. So here's my vision You guys help me make it happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Or if you are leading a seven, you want to position them on a team where they're generating the ideas, getting to come up with things as opposed to, you know, if you stick them on the mundane work that is repetitive that other types really enjoy. Sure. um, They're going to get bored with that and they're going to be somewhere else mentally. Mentally. Um, Yeah. Interesting. I love that. So if we're a seven ourselves, what are some ways that we can grow? Um, all right. You're going to pick one task to finish this week. <laughs> so maybe you had this as a goal every week. You're mm-hmm. going to pick a task to finish and you're going to commit to seeing it through even when the work loses its fun. Mm-hmm. So if you can take that's things, really hard. Yeah, it yeah. is really hard because it feels sevens feel like boredom is a trap and they feel trapped, sure, trapped and like they can't go and like it's suffocating for them. Sure. So they want to just bound off into the next thing. So finding one thing to finish mm-hmm. and committing to doing mm-hmm. it and getting it done. Another thing is sevens usually have somebody who is a stabilizing or tethering force in their life. Mm. Um, and so when we are really doing well and being self-aware a seven will cling to that person mm. in order to keep them grounded. So sevens need to resist the urge to escape the grounding that mm-hmm. these people or or even things like your family sure. tethers you to a spot. You can't mm-hmm. just, you know, go off right. on your own all of a sudden. Yes. You have to check in with people. Yes. Um, and try to slow down enough to fully listen and ask more questions and appreciate that grounding that people offer you as opposed to resisting it. Mm, yeah, that's a, that it's a positive thing yeah. to have that versus yeah. that, oh my gosh, this is keeping me stuck. Right. Yes, I could see that. I've yeah. heard a lot of other sevens, because I'm friends with them, talk about that idea of feeling stuck mm-hmm. and just wanting to escape. Or when it gets too overwhelming, right. the idea of escaping, like physically escaping, yeah. <laughs> physically leaving and going somewhere where no one else knows that you yeah. go. Do you feel like there's often, um, because they seem so happy all the time, that we can, mi- you'd mentioned this, but that we can yes. miss it? Yes, thank you for coming back around that. Sevens need you to check on them. Mm. Um, because I definitely they don't do not, that well enough. Yes, I don't either. They are not going to portray sadness overtly. Yeah. Um, so if you see a seven becoming more erratic and more, you know, spontaneous at times where it's not really appropriate, you may want to check in and go, Hey, how are you doing really? And you may have to ask a couple times and they want to know that somebody's going to take care of them. Mm-hmm. So, because I think they feel responsibility to the group to kind of be the lighthearted yeah. person, not always expecting them to be on mm. is going to be really important too. So if they're at, you know, a gathering mm. of the company, not looking to them to be the entertainment sure. or going, what's wrong? Why are you so down? Yeah. It's like, no, I'm just not on. <laughs> I'm just not on right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that. allowing them the space to not have to entertain. Yeah. So is there anything else for a seven that they can learn upon or, or grow upon? Any other growing things that we've got? I think we've covered um, them all probably. Yeah. Right? I think just slowing down. Your yeah. mind is racing mm-hmm. so fast. You know how we've talked about stillness and solitude for other numbers. Yeah. Stillness is a good one for sevens and having a practice of stillness in your mind as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe you have to think on a certain phrase. I like to practice breath prayer sometimes. So mm-hmm. meaning when I breathe in, I say to myself in my mind, one thing about God, when I breathe out something else, Mm, like that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So sometimes I'll sit there and go, God created me. And he said, I was very good. Like each breath in and out. And so that gives your mind something to do Mm. where it's not racing. Cause as soon as we all get silent, all the numbers do this. Whenever we get silent, our brains just, you know, 
Yeah. It's an exhausting place to live is what I joke at. (laughs) Yeah. It just starts doing crazy things. So if you kind of give it a task. Sure. Um, but be able to be still in the moment as well. Yeah. It's good. I love that. I love that. So if somebody thinks they might be a seven, where's the best place that they can kind of solidify if they're a seven? Okay. I always like to send people to read something. Yes. So either going on um, the Enneagram Institute website and reading all of the type descriptions or reading um, The Road Back to You by Perfect. Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabile. It's a great introduction to all of the different types and you will probably just find yourself in one or yes. at least be able to eliminate some. Sometimes it takes people a while to find their type. And that's okay. Yes, mm-hmm. it's totally okay. Especially because a lot of the types have similar behavior, mm-hmm. um, but their motivations are different. So as you're reading all of these things, look for the motivation, examine your motivation in your life of why you do what you do. And that mm-hmm. will help you find your type faster. Yeah, I love that. And so there's another way that they, it's probably a better way, in fact, than besides just reading it, what, what can they do? Sure. Um, having me come and teach it. <laughs> so learning. She's very fun, Seven. <laughs> yes, I am fun. Um, learning from somebody who has spent time studying yes. this, because I think Enneagram culture right now is very big. It's and very people big and like, national. Yes, yes. They mm-hmm. like to, you know, people like to talk about it. People like to mm-hmm. get the surface level and go with that. But to really see transformational growth. Um, Mm -hmm. You need somebody who's studied. So I work with teams coming in and, you know, talking to your whole team about what their types are and how they interact or one-on-one coaching to dig deeper into your own self-awareness for transformation. Gosh, that's just so valuable. And I wish that I had known about this when I lived in New York City with a lot of the teams that I was on because we've said this in a couple of other episodes, but I really do feel like the dysfunction in a team comes not from the work that you're doing. It comes from the relationships that you're having right. within there. And a lot of stress can be relieved if you're understanding each other better and meeting in the middle and having empathy, yes. right? And a lot of that comes with the self-awareness, which right. you're able to help almost facilitate, yes. you know, help facilitate that self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Obviously we're responsible for ourselves in that adventure. Right. But I think that what you offer is super amazing. And you can reach out to her on her website, yes. Lauren Elkins Gray, and that's gray with an A, a. Uh-huh. dot com um, to find out more about her services. And she also has an amazing freebie for you guys listening. So if you want to learn more about the Enneagram at work, you can go to Lauren Elkins Gray dot com slash freebie. Super simple. We hope this was really valuable for you. We're going to move on to type eight. Yes. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.jennaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.